Hi, welcome to the Piss Head Nerds podcast. Uh, around about Christmas time, I checked myself to a nice, sleek and sexy PSP Slim. Uh, up until now, I've kind of shied away from hacking the, the firmware, because, well, from what I've read on the net, it always seemed a bit of a, a fiddly thing, and there was always the chance that I could brick it, and I, I, I didn't want to screw it up. And actually, it kind of turned out alright, because my first one actually developed a fault down the side, as you probably might have seen on my, uh, on my website. Um, However, uh, my, my whole thought on how much of a pain in the ass it was to hack it uh, was completely blown out of the water by a fantastic guide that I stumbled across on the net on blast processing. I've got the, the actual link just here for you to see. Now, basically, this just spelled out exactly what you needed to do step by step, and it seemed incredibly easy. You only needed two things. The first one, you have to purchase this little thing here. It's known as a Pandora's battery. Now, what this will do is it will, once you plop it in, it will force your PSP into what's known as service mode. This is the uh, the kind of the kind of environment that all the, the actual engineers use uh, if they're going to be you know refurbishing your PSP. They'll they'll use that kind of mode to put whatever firmware they want on there. Usually, you know, it'll be their official ones or you know what what they'll use to put test ones on for for them when they're developing the new firmwares. Um, for, for our purpose, it's absolutely fantastic for plonking on whatever firmware that we want that we've created. Well, Woody hasn't, as in the community. I, I personally haven't made any of them. Um, well, basically, uh, once you've got your, your, you know, once you've purchased one of these, all you need is a little memory card. Uh, I've got a 1 gig, but you can go as low as a 512. It doesn't really take that much space up on this. Uh, the guide on blast processing tells you exactly what to do step by step to build one of these. So I'm not going to bore you with the details of it. Just, well, I can't really, uh, I can't really go through it better than they have. So <laughs> a little bit of reading for you. But once you've built up one of these and you purchased a Pandora's battery, all you need to do is pop your memory card in. Uh, yoink out the battery. Now remember charge this thing up for at least an hour before you put it in because it's going to need the battery power and you know if it runs out of battery if it runs out of life in the middle of flashing it you could potentially brick this thing so take no chances and charge it up before you do anything uh, when you do pop it in it's going to power it up straight away so this is why you want to put in the card before you do it also make sure there's no UMDs in here just, just in case I mean I, I don't know if it's going to actually have any effect on it but yeah worth taking out all of, all uh, all potentials so you slam this thing in and it powers straight up and it enters service mode which basically is just that little interface there you can't really read it because my camera's a bit on the shy side uh, basically all this is doing is telling you press X to install custom firmware press O to install an official one press uh, what was it square to dump the the actual flash memory on this thing which contains some extra information that's quite important really you'll you'll want to do that just in case anything you know the worst does happen uh, the reason why you might want to uh, pop on an official uh, firmware is if maybe this has developed a hardware fault and you want to send it back to Sony this is the potential they may turn around and go hmm, you've got you know you've hacked it you've obviously caused the problem we're not gonna you know we're not gonna fulfill our warranty uh, agreement you know, put the original firmware on there so they one less thing for them to bitch about. And uh, once you've done that, just hit X and it will begin um, going through the process. You'll get loads of text spinning all the way down. It takes around about four or five minutes. I'm not going to waste my uh, waste yours and my time doing the uh, the recording of this because well, it's going to bore the shit out of you. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Good. Now then, hope everything went all right for you. Went perfectly fine for me. Once you uh, once you've done the actual thing, uh, something to be you know uh, keep in mind. Once you've put on a custom firmware, the one that I did, which will be the one that you do if you follow the guide, swaps over the accept and the reject buttons. So now uh, circle is your accept, X is your reject. Kind of throws you at first. You you still program to use the original ones, but you know keep that in mind. But once you've uh, once you've gone through it, I'll just bring it up so you can uh, you can actually see. That's the firmware. That's it hacked. Easy as that. Nothing more to it. Just clunk in, powers up, select, you know, press X, select it, go through, and away you go. The um, keeping it up to date with the latest 
latest custom firmwares can't be any more easy because, well, they swap over the network update to point to the, uh, the actual custom firmware site. So, you effectively, you're using it no different, and you've got a whole world of applications and all sorts of different potential uses that have just been opened up to you. Sony, why don't you let this be open from the get-go? This could be absolutely fantastic and drive your sales. Anyway, if you've had any problems with, uh, with updating it, if you've found better ways of doing it, if you've got any programs or things like that that you want to share, that you actually use on your hacked PSP, hop over to www.pissednurse.com and share it with everyone. So, until the next podcast, see you later. Bye.